and it does appear that we are live so what i will do is i will wait the last few seconds which is let me see quickly oh my watch is charging i can't actually see i think we've got probably got about 15 seconds left uh five seconds four three two one i suppose this is where we do the silent countdown ding, ding, ding. cool Okay, no, there isn't. Yeah. It is not possible. <laughs> so, uh, welcome everyone. This is another episode of Developers Let's Code, but this one will be a little bit different. Um, so what we are going to be doing today is we are going to be taking a look at how to set up and configure the AWS CLI and also how that affects, for example, when you use the, S, uh, the SDK, the AWS SDK that you can embed in your own applications and how some 30 pop um, applications actually use that. And joining me today, which is why it's a little bit different, is Darko Mezarosh. I Hello. still can't get the surname quite right. Um, Almost. And Almost. we are trying to make the show a little bit more interactive and, and entertaining. So what we'll be doing throughout the show is showing you how to actually do the setup. And then we will also be literally sharing the screen and discussing the things and a couple of interesting things around the AWS SDK uh, and CLI and integrate them. But before we get to all of that, uh, Darko, why don't you introduce yourself quickly to our audience? Yes, hello, and first of all, thank you, Kubus, for having me on this session. I was not supposed to be here, but um, I'm very happy to be, uh, well, supporting the developers. Let's code once again. Um, my name is Darko Mesaros, as it says somewhere here. Um, um, I am a developer advocate, same as Kubus. I am based out of Berlin, Germany, but I do come from lovely Serbia, uh, hence the name. So uh, I've been, I am covering Central Eastern Europe uh, plus Russia. And uh, I've been with AWS for four and a half years, four years, four years and seven months now, so almost five. Um, getting, getting, uh, getting to there. Thank awesome. you for having me, Kovas. No, it's a pleasure. So um, my name is Chris Bernard, and I am, as Darko is, a developer advocate, and I cover Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and what we are going to do today is we are going to start off with telling you a little bit about the AWS uh, CLI uh, as well as the SDK, and then we are going to go just jump jump straight into a um, hands-on, let us set things up and play. But first, what we should probably do is we should explain the difference between the console, the CLI, and the SDK, because sometimes um, it's not as clear as it should be. So firstly, the console. Darko, what is the AWS console? Oh, this is the thing where uh, when I talk to people about the console, a lot of people when they hear a console, they immediately think, "Oh, the terminal!" Like that's what I call a console. Mm. Well, um, uh, most of the times when we talk about the console, we mean the web interface, right? The AWS console, the thing where you where you use this thing to clickety click and launch your EC2 instances and create your S3 buckets. So, and, and in hmm. essence, uh, that's the default place where people start uh, with AWS and. Think of the AWS console as just a lovely front end for a whole bunch of API calls. Because in essence, what happens in the console when you click that launch button, it run, makes an API call to the AWS backend and that API call actually executes a, 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 a create instance, a launch instance API call mm. for you. And that's it, right? So it's a, it's a lovely front end for, for the API. Mm. Awesome. Um, so just quickly for those, I see we have got a couple of people online and sorry, sorry I'm looking at the side because my screen set is a little different than normal. Um, welcome. Um, this is an interactive session. So if you have questions as we go along about the AWS CLI uh, or SDK, that's what we're focusing on for this session, please pop them in the chat. Uh, also, just say hi and tell us where you're from in the chat. We always like to know yeah. wh um, when people are watching and where are they watching from. So that covers the, what is the AWS uh, console? Now the other two components is the CLI or command line interface, um, as well as the SDK, which is a software development kit. Now, as Darko mentioned, people sometimes confuse the console with the terminal and that's where the CLI comes in. So the AWS CLI is a um, package that you install um, on your operating system of choice. And then you have a command line inter interaction with the AWS APIs. Now, effectively, it wraps a whole lot of parameters and the like the WGET calls or HTTP calls that you make, status codes, et cetera, et cetera. And you can do some interesting things with it. So you can get information out of it. Now, how that differs from the SDK, which is a software development kit, is that the SDK is available in um, a whole bunch of different languages, uh, Python, Java, uh, C Sharp, I think, the, yeah, Go definitely. I've seen people build with Go. Go and up. what you do is you would then use this SDK inside your application as a library, and that has got these uh, API calls trapped for you as well. So you can make from in whatever app you're busy building, make calls directly against the AWS APIs as well, 
which means you can build native functionality of the cloud into your application. For example, let's say making a call to Amazon uh, recognition, which allows you to process an image and get some metadata out of it. Like, does the person have a beard? Yes. Um, does the person, are they smiling, eyes open, etc. Um, so you can get all of that, these API calls natively inside the application. So that's the difference between the console, the CLI, and the SDK. So what we're going to be doing today now, and this is why I pulled in Docker to help me a little bit with this, to make it a little bit more interesting with a bit of banter, a bit of breaking things and all of that, is that we are going to show you how to create uh, an uh, EC2 key pair um, in all three ways. So the first way um, that I'll take quickly, let me just do my screen share. It sounds like uh, DevOps, screen share. The, the three ways of DevOps, right? <laughs> <laughs> Buy the tool. Use the tool, blame the tool, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> we are kidding. Uh, okay, let me see quickly. Okay, so what we can see in front of us is the AWS console, as mentioned before. So this is, let me just get that banner out the way so we can see the whole thing. Um, it should be big enough. If it's not, please let us know in the comments. Um, but I think it should be legible. So the first thing we want to do is that when you spin up an EC2 instance, you probably want to connect to it. Um, now, typically, people spin up Linux instances. It's, it's the bulk of the instances that we use uh, or that our customers use. But you can also spin up Windows instances. Um, for today, we are focusing just on the Linux ones, which means we need to be able to SSH them. So to be able to SSH, you need a SSH key. Now, this is a mechanism that you've got. Uh, it's split into private and public. You've got a bit, that the, so the server's got the public portion of the key, then you use that to connect to it. And if you don't have both, you won't be able to. Um, it's much better than using a password because a password can be brute forced over time where SSH keys are effectively, with current technology, you always have to asterisk that because there might something like quantum computing might come along and break that. But we are able to get into it much uh, more securely than before. So let's go ahead. So Darko, where is, how do we create an SSH key in the console? So um, I think on the left-hand side, there should be something called uh, uh, access keys or uh, SSH keys. If you look down, there should be Close, 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 close. We're getting key very pairs. close. Key pairs, key pairs. There we go. Why is it called a key pair? Hmm. Uh, yes. Because it actually uses two keys. One key, which is the public key, is going to be sitting on the destination instance. So it's going to be sitting on your EC2 instance, on your server, wherever you're going to ac access it. And the private key is actually sitting on your local workstation. So you are yes. basically some math is happening. The Diffie Hellman key exchange method is happening where um, uh, basically the, the, the other server is determining do you have the correct key or not without ever having to send your public key. So when we click the uh, lovely yellow or orange create key pair, what happens is that uh, AWS generates a key pair for you. The private key is actually being handed over to you and that's it. It doesn't exist on AWS anymore. But the public key is available to be put put on EC2 instances when they are bootstrapped, right? So, um, are we going to do it from here? Yeah, we are going to create a key pair, and it's very very simple. You click the create key pair, you give it a name, um, my new key pair, just to be very very um, boring. And then what you need to do is you need to pick what format. Now, what you can see over here is that it's defaulting to PPK format for use with PuTTY, which is a Windows application to actually do um, that handles SSH for you. Um, and it's probably picking this up because I'm running inside Chrome on a Windows browser. So the user agent told the console that, you know, this is Windows user. But you, um, usually if you're connecting from a Mac or from a uh, other Linux machine, you would want the PEM format because that's by default with Linux users. Yeah. The good news, however, is that with Windows, with PowerShell, you can actually use the PEM format directly. So SSH, my understanding is built into PowerShell now. It has open SSH on it now, yeah. Yes. Even so that is what we. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be selecting the PEM format, and that's pretty much it. Unless you want to add some tags to it. So we go ahead and say, "Cool, create a key pair," and you can see automatically over here it started downloading the key because this is the only time you can actually get the key is when you create it. After that, there's no mechanism to get the key again. So please keep these safe. This is for security reasons. Um, because imagine being able to just go into the console. Uh, click keys key. and download them and access instances. That kind of breaks the security model a little bit. And, and that used to happen. Like uh, it used to happen that customers. I used to work in premium support. So customers would call up us, call us up, and hey, um, I've lost my my key. Can you get me? Can you get me my key? No, literally, we have. It's gone. Like once you click download, it doesn't exist anymore. Besides, mm. in your downloads directory. So that's very important that you understand that. Okay. 
So there's one more way in the console that you can create a key, which is normally when you launch an EC2 instance, yes. the final step is what SSH key do you want to use? Um, and what that uh, that key, you can either pick one from a dropdown list and then tick a box that says, yes, yeah. I have access and yes, I understand. Um, because we often have people saying, listen, well, I launched the instance and I said yes, and I don't know where the key is. So there's a, there's a little barrier there now that makes you say, oh, make sure you've got the key. So you go, okay, let me go check quickly and make sure. Um, so that's the second way in the console. So now what we're going to do is we are going to show you how to do it via the CLI. Mm, dum, dum, dum. So let me just quickly share my screen. Stop sharing. I need to share a specific app window. Let's share this one. So this is, ooh, ooh. let me just quick, let me just quickly say uh, clear. I'll do that. Okay. So it's just the top that's gobbled. That's all right. Yeah. So, but the rest seems to be um, readable. Cool. Okay. So what we need to do now is we need to make use of the AWS CLI to create a key. So what I did is that I just spun up a fresh Ubuntu 18.04 uh, virtual machine, the default one that you see when you select, um, say, launch EC2 instance. Right. So let's first quickly see if we have got the AWS CLI installed. We should be. Okay, we do not have that. Hmm. So we are going to get to this in detail and follow okay. the official AWS documentation. But for now, I'm going to just quickly cheat and say uh, pip install uh, AWS CLI like this. Oh, pip's not installed. Pip3, pip3. You can do pip3. You okay. can do pip3. 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 There we go. Let's just double check. Uh, okay. Ooh, it is broken. Uh, let's just double check. Uh, the power, that's power shell bad window color. doesn't do it justice at all. Yeah. So let me just quickly say sudo. Ooh, it's struggling. Ooh. 404 not found. So, um... let's quickly double check and troubleshoot this. HTTPS, uh, well, no, just uh, pypy.org. It could be that our DNS. Okay, so it can actually see it. So it's not that. It works because I've actually installed the package right now in the same box using pip. So it works. So okay. something is wrong with AWS CLI. Okay, so let's quickly double check here. Uh, sudo pip3 install AWS CLI. Let's just double check. Yep, there's definitely something wrong. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, life will now be a little bit fun. So for some reason, <laughs> that package is now broken. Okay. And just quickly, I wish... Oh, yeah. Yes, um, let's just quickly confirm if this is actually with a dash. I'm 99% certain it is. Let's just confirm. Oh, okay. Use error. Apologies. <laughs> this is what happens if you don't pay attention. So... <laughs> Right, let's try this again. Uh, AWS dash dash version. Right, we have got the CLI version 1.18.139 installed currently. We will talk about version two of the CLI, but now if I want to create a key, all I have to do is I say AWS uh, EC2 create a key pair and dash double uh, dash uh, CLI uh, auto prompt. Oh, sorry, if I can spell auto. It's double Prompt. dash. You're missing cool. a single dash. You're oh. missing a dash. So oh, all sorry. commands that are longer than a single character are always double dash at the beginning. Okay. Cool. Wait. Sorry. Let me just. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, ooh, I'm getting some noise here. And let's just call this uh, CLI um, key pair like that. Cool. Oh, I have you to give to the actual. It, yeah. Uh, where is double dash? Sorry, I have to look past my mic. Double dash, uh, key dash name, key name. There we go. Yeah. Thank you, Docker. Huh? CLI auto prompt. And now, is the CLI auto prompt a, a version, uh, a feature of uh, CLI oh. 2.0? Or, uh, uh, I, I'm actually thinking, you know, what's happening over here? I think I'm being doffed. Let's just quickly check here quickly. If I say key, no, it doesn't do, uh, key pair name. Uh, CLI key pair. I think what I did wrong here is that, hmm, let us do AWS help. I am not paying enough attention here. EC2 creates key pair. Right, there we go. Uh, oh, it's key names, not key pair names. Sorry, okay. my mistake. I'm not reading it. Sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, right, we don't have a region, so let us do that. Region uh, AF South 1, because I'm running things in the Cape Town region. Are those not familiar? Ah, here ah, we go. The problem. We cannot. Yes. So what's happening here? This is the first step, and this is, hi, um, 
Danimation Games. Danimation Games, yeah. Hello, Danimation yes. Games. Yes. Yes. Hi. Um, so this is now the first step. Now, what has just happened? Well, we are trying to interact with the AWS uh, APIs. We have got the AWS CLI installed, Correct. and we are trying to say, listen, please go generate me something. Do something inside my account. And it's saying, like, I can't. We don't have credentials. Hmm. OK. So now we have to get into the fun part of setting up credentials. So let's quickly figure out how to do that. Well, what I'm going to do now is um, let me see if there's an easy way to share. No, there's no easy way. OK, I'm going to be jumping between the different screens. Apologies for this. There's no easy way to keep two of them in focus the whole time. Um, there we go. We have got the shared screen over here. Um, and um, let me just double check something here quickly, make sure everything, uh, not that one. Where'd it go? There we go. Uh, cool. Um, we have got this to screen. OK, right. So now what we have to do is we have to give this EC2 instance access to be able to you know, interact with AWS CLI. So this is a nice part. If you're running with uh, an EC2 instance inside AWS, uh, you can associate what's called an IAM role with it, which we covered in a previous episode, um, that allows you to give it permission. Now, but that's not what we want to do today. Um, we want to be able to show you how to actually configure your CLI. So for that, we need a user. So let's go over to the IAM console, punching an IAM like that. And we are quickly going to create a user. Um, I will be pausing the screen share just when I copy some of the sensitive parts because I don't want people to abuse this account. Unfortunately, people on the internet uh, are sometimes very quick to do that. Yeah. So what do we do first? Well, first is we create a uh, group. So you can see over here that I've got some groups webinar developers. So we can say create new group. And this we are going to say administrators like that. And this is just a name. You can make it anything you want. Now we have to decide what access does this user have? And we're going to say, well, give it administrator access because we want to play with the CLI for now. So let's go ahead and say create the group. And we will just have that created. And now what we do is now we go ahead and say create a user for us. So add user. And let's call this um, uh, developer let's code uh, CLI. So fun. Now the fun part over here is that we have to specify the type of access. We're going to go for programmatic access because we want to use the CLI with the access key and that. Um, now we add them to a group. Over here we can see administrators. I'm just going to go slightly quicker through here because we have covered this in the past episode. So now we've got a user who's part of the admin group. The admin group has got the right uh, permissions. And now we go ahead and say create user. Now this is where the fun part comes in. Over here you can see this is the username as well as the access key. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that access key. And I will, let me just start up Notepad over here quickly to make notes. Uh, pop that uh, down here. Cool, and I'm pasting that in there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Show button, but I'm going to do that with screen sharing disabled because, like I see, said, this is the um, – thank you, Darko. This is the uh, sensitive part um, of your API. Your, your access key is, is visible. It's fine to be visible. The only thing that you should never share is the secret key, and the secret key is a very mm. long, complex string of, of characters. So, Yes. So what I've done now is I've now copied and pasted that into um, – my notepad over here. So let's go ahead and say close. And now we've got a user. So how do we now configure our CLI is the question. Well, let us quickly go to that screen again. Sorry, I need to stop sharing. Share screen again, application, there we go. And we are back to where we were previously. Right. So what you can see over here is that there's a, a hint over here that says AWS configure. So let's do that. Configure. And what it's going to ask us for is the access key. So let's go ahead and copy that out of notepad. And we are pasting that in. And you can see over there, enter. Now it's going to ask for the secret key. Now, I'm just quickly going to repaste. No, no, but keep it on the thing, because I'm going to repaste the access key, because I actually want to see if it prints it out. It does. So it we does, have to. Does, does, yeah. uh, so once again, if you're doing this, just remember, do not do this where somebody can see this, because the secret key is called secret, because it has to say secret. So, so we will switch. One yeah? point of note, these keys are going to be stored in plain text format inside of your home directory. So yes. if that user is used by multiple people, take care because they could get your key. So yeah. everybody should there have their own key and their yeah. own user cool. system. So I'm quickly going to paste this in now. Mm. Not like that. Uh, off screen and press enter. Uh, and the def it's now asking for the default region, which is AF South 1. Cool. 
and default output format, which is, uh, I'm going to go for text for now, and I'll sh we'll cover that a little bit later. And now it's done. So now quickly, I just need to uh, clean the screen, and we can bring the screen back up again. Cool. So now what can happen is if I run this command again, which is this region, um, and I can actually remove that region part now because I set that up as part of the default settings for this uh, AWS CLI configuration. If I run this now, boom, you can see that there is now a key pair that has been generated. Um, now, this key pair itself isn't installed anywhere yet, which is why I'm displaying this on screen yeah. because, but once again, you should not be displaying this. You should not be sharing this. This is private. Um, but it's cool. So this is how to create it with the, the CLI. Now for the last trick for today, um, in terms of this part of the session where we focus on the SH key is, let me just clear the screen. Oops, sorry, wrong button. That one um, is I'm going to quickly create a Python script, which is um, uh, create key dot uh, Python, so PY extension. Insert, um, and let me just quickly grab the code that I have over here. And let's see if we can paste this successfully. Yes. Ooh, the coloring was horrible. I apologize for that. So what we have at the top, which you can't see, is the what's called the shebang, um, um, which tells it the interpreter. So it currently says, um, uh, where can I put this? Let me actually put it up here, banners. I'm going to create a new banner. Um, uh, enter. Let's add the banner quickly. So this is what I've added. Um, the line breaks are a little bit broken here, but it's that hash exclamation user bin environment Python 3. And then it's got the imports, which is Boto 3. And then it's just got a line saying EC2 client create key pair name Python and then print the response. So not too much information in there. Um, and now what I'm going to do is just quickly save this file. Uh, oh, sorry, different key bindings. So quit uh, using colon that. And now I'm going to go Python 3 and say create key pair. Let's just clear the screen and run this. And Oh, no module named Boto3. So That's I'm assuming thing. I need to install. Yes. So pip3 install Boto3. There we go. And now you can see that it's installing Boto3. Um, and now let's try this again. We can go ahead and run this. And similar output to before. But as I said before, please, please, please never share this information. Yeah. And just uh, to show you that, yeah. It's not, I mean, this case is not usable right now. It's created, but no. unless Cobus opts to use it in uh, on an EC2 instance, it's okay, right? But if you plan to create a key and don't live stream creating your key for production, please. And also don't commit this key anyway. You, you should never, anything yeah. like a key or an access um, a key and secret, do not commit them anywhere. Also, please do not hard code them. The whole point of today's session is to show you how to use these without hard coding them. Right. Um, also, just quickly, I see we've got a couple of new viewers. If you want to ask us questions about the AWS CLI or SDK or how to set them up and configure them, this is what today's session is on. So please do, do ping us. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my screen share again. Give me a second. Um, stop, share, app. Uh, we want to go back to the console, share. There we go. Now we are back in the console. And now what you can see over here is that in the dashboard section, we have more key pairs. So now all of a sudden, ooh, we've got a lot. Yeah. So this awesome week was one that I did for a demo. Um, this is the key pair we just created with our CLI call. And this key over here, the Python one, which we had a name inside the Python text, uh, or the Python script was the one that we just created. So you can see this is how you get um, the um, uh, keys created that you can use. OK, so not that useful. What we're going to do now is we are actually going to install the version two of the AWS CLI. So for that, we're going to say search AWS CLI v2 install. And here we go. And just in case um, this seems very uh, simple and easy, remember we are trying to uh, help developers who are just starting out with AWS. And we are specifically focusing on how do we help people use uh, AWS and the different tooling if they don't know anything about AWS. Cool. So what have we got here? Installing the AWS CLI version 2. And we can look at it, how to uh, use the official CLI version 2 Docker image, CLI version on Linux, Mac, Windows, etc. We are running on Linux. So we are going to hit Linux over here. And now uh, we are going to scroll down. And we can see over here, cool, let's say. CLI versions 1 and 2 uses the same AWS command. Name if both versions are installed, your computer uses the first one finding a search path. Um, ah, so recommendation here is if you 
Um, and you can see this recommendation here is install version one. So, uh, so let us do that uninstall, and say yeah, pip3, yeah. uninstall, sorry, not install, uninstall uh, AWS CLI, no dash. So let us remove that and make sure that we don't have that. And yes, we're going to say, ooh. An additional thing regarding to... CLI too is that uh, one of the aspects of the CLI is the way it outputs text or, or the way it out outputs outputs information or pages information uses pagination. Uh, CLI two by default uses less as a paginator. So if you are coming from CLI one in an automation aspect and expect it to out output like just all the things without pagination you have to make sure to configure that as well. Otherwise your, mm. your automation will be blocked because it's going to be waiting on less. So, but that's yeah. just another story if, if you're coming from CLI one. Cool. So awesome. So basically this was important. We now took that step and actually removed it. So how do we install it on Linux? Cool. Let's first look at the prerequisites. So you must be able to extract or unzip. Let's just check if we have got unzip over here. Ah, we don't. Uh, so let's quickly install. Oops, are, you uh, gonna switch to the, are you going to switch to the... Uh, oh, apologies. <laughs> um, do you want... Uh, how can we do this better? Um, um, I'm trying to think now. Do you want me to connect uh, to, the, to the session and and we can do it somehow like together? Or because I'm connected to the EC2 instance, if I do something, maybe i can maybe if you can open up the documentation quickly yeah um, let's, let's do that let's do that yeah. so cool um, so while that is happening this is why it's useful to have a stream buddy in case you were wondering yes um so let me do that and cool i will i will cool. be, we've got I'll, that i'll teeter tot from this one let's do that Cool. There we go. Sorry. So what you missed previously is I un uninstalled the AWS CLI because that wasn't showing on screen. And you can see now on the screen that when I run AWS version up here, right. uh, that it failed. So we don't have that installed anymore. So I'm going to just quickly install unzip so we can unzip. Uh, that we can see it's now installed. So now Sorry. we go back to this one. Um, see what else do we need to install? Just okay. So unzip is now working. Cool. Yeah, okay. What do we have to do? So Step number two is it uses uh, glibc and giraffe and less. These are included by default on most main, uh, mentions, yeah. so we can assume it is. Um, it needs 64 bits, so yes, we are running a 64 bit. Um, and there we go. That looks like what we need. So, yeah. what does this say on the install steps? It's very simple. It's basically just three commands. We're downloading our zip zip directory and we're installing it, unzipping it, and running the install script on it. That's 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 as 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 much as we have to do, right? This would okay, be basically cool. well, how we're gonna do. Let's switch to the let me show you. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Let's show you how to do that. So now I'm pasting in the, the curl command, which is and you can see it's AWS CLI dot Amazon AWS dot com uh exe Linux zip. There we go. Cool. Now we're going to unzip it, uh, which is the AWS that file. Cool. And we can see uh, now is that there is the AWS. Oh, these colors are terrible. Sorry, AWS. I will fix that for next time. Uh, sorry, Alice. There we go. And now what I'm going to be running um, is we're going to run that sudo and then dot slash install because I'm now inside the AWS directory. And now let us run this. Uh, there we go. That was quick. Yeah, there we go. AWS dash dash version. Let's clear the screen. And voila, now we can see that we have got Perfect. version two up and running, which is awesome. So that is definitely something we want to do. So we already went through um, creating the MI user inside the console, but here's an interesting thing. I can go AWS IAM uh, get current user like that. Uh, oh, wait, what did I do wrong? Um, uh, this is version one. Err, cool. So let me show you quickly. AWS help. <laughs> I am. We can see the following commands. Uh, topics is three config. Hmm. Oh, you, you you cannot you cannot do uh, help. I am. You have to you do AWS. I am. Oh, oh. I am the wrong way wrong. Yeah. Help. I am not. I am help. It gives you this lovely man page. Mm. <laughs> yes. So. Everything is documented in here, and this documentation mirrors what you can see online. So while you can fire up a browser window and actually have a look at it, um, it's always good to also know that you can do it from the command line where you are busy building things. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to find my mouse. We have our first comment. Is uh, Copilot 
part of the AWS CLI? Uh, no. Copilot is um, a, an additional command line utility that we released that you would install on its own. So it's not built into the AWS CLI um, at the moment. Um, I'm not sure if there are any plans, but um, let's see uh, quickly. Uh, I have got a, yeah. Cool. Uh, Darko is just making a suggestion that I try uh, using the command prompt to SSH instead of uh, PowerShell. So let's just quickly see if that works. Uh, dash I. I'm going to do that. Um, I'm just... Ooh, it doesn't pick that up. I've, okay, I've, I'm going I, to have to... Yeah, if it doesn't work, I mean, for me, I have SSH on my, on my CMD. Like, if I just use a command prompt, okay. it's it better colors, at least. Uh, the PowerShell color, color scheme is, is fine for PowerShell, but for anything else, it's... Uh, hmm. It's, it's not that I good. Don't. Okay. No. But um, I think let's continue with this un until we start hitting too many coloring issues. So what we're now doing is we are now looking for a get. So we can get a uh, account summary. I want to see if I can get the current user. So let's see quickly. Context, credential reports, get instance profile, um, possibly login profile. Because mm -hmm. there's a difference between version 1 and version 2. And this is now what we're hitting over here is okay. that um, I can't get the current user. Interesting. Let's just see. Maybe there's a get user. Just to confirm. There we go. Get user. Awesome. That is what I wanted. So if I do this and say get user, it might ask me for. Oh, and it's probably going to ask a specific. Oh no. Here we go. Yeah. What we can see over here is. Yeah. If you do, if you, if to make this nicer, you can do dash uh, dash dash output JSON, and you're going to get a JSON output, which believe it or not is better in this case. So really? Yeah. If you do the output JSON, it looks nicer. Of course, it's got new lines. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. OK, good point. You can actually do table output as well um, with the CLI, I believe, uh, to make it a little bit. Uh, actually, let's do this. Um, uh, dash dash human readable. Leave that as something pretty to it. No. no. OK. It's only for some commands, unfortunately, not all. Uh, yes, it's S3 command I see. Cool. So, but getting back to this one. So, what can we see over here? That user that we just created, the DLC for developers with code CLI, along with the user ID, um, is there. And also, we can have the uh, we have the ARN, which is the Amazon resource name for it, if we need to reference it, along with when this user was created. And we can see this was literally how many minutes ago? 14, 15 minutes ago. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Now, what is next? Well, we can now see this, but there are some other things that we can run. Yeah. This is very important for troubleshooting. Like if you are having a permissions issue with your CLI or SDK, it's always great to see the get user output to see on behalf of who, which user are you running these commands as. Yes, which is a great plug into the next part, which is this uh, get caller identity. Um, let's just do that. I'll put uh, JSON again as well. So you can see this is similar to the previous one. The difference, however, is the following. Um, and we're going to touch on this a little bit at what Docker just mentioned, is that me as the specific calling identity can assume other identities and do things on their behalf. And where this becomes super useful is that, for example, this EC2 instance or this IAM user that we've created can have permission to switch into an entirely different AWS account and then execute whatever permissions I have inside that account. For example, spin up EC2 instances or shut them down or create um, uh, an ECS cluster, et cetera. So that's quite, quite, quite useful in terms of setting those up. Um, then what we didn't touch on yet is the default built-in um, AWS credentials uh, for EC2 instances when you use IAM rules. So I will quickly want to touch on that. And then after that, we're going to jump into Docker. It's actually going to show us about the AWS shell which is quite a fun one to use. So firstly, let's um, show you the, there's this uh, directory in your home directory, Alice, um, and you can see there's a config and a credentials file. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say move.aws uh, to .aws um, uh, backup. Right. And now, sorry, uh, clean uh, AWS, get the other command. So this call identity that just was working, guess what happens when I hit this now? We can see, sorry, no credentials. And this is because we just moved the credentials files away. Um, and to be able to now make use of uh, the IAM role on an EC2 instance, I'm just going to stop screen share and hop into the uh, application window. Uh, here we go, share. 
there we have it. Um, and I'm going to go back to the EC2 console. Now, what I can do over here is if I look at my, uh, sorry, instances over here, uh, this instance that we have, what I can do is I can right click on it and I can say instance settings and I can say modify IAM role. Now, what we can see at the moment is that this instance doesn't have any IAM role, which is not great. So what we can do is we can select one of the IAM roles that we have available over here. Now, I've got a whole bunch available that I've used before, but the one that I'm fairly certain is an admin level is this EC2 webinar one. So we're going to get it over here and save. Now, when we apply this IAM role to the actual instance, um, what happens is in the background, there's a metadata service that connects with AWS services and creates a key pair that, um, so a private access key and a um, private access secret to interact with AWS CLI. It sets that on the instance as environment variables via um, a local API running on the instance. And then from your perspective, magically, it just works. Um, those credentials are also rotated every 15 minutes. Um, so even if someone grabs them off the instance, they only valid for 15 minutes. Yeah. So now what happens what, is, what, what is... What is the preference here? Uh, are, are the local credentials going to be pre preferenced or uh, is the EC2 instance credentials going to be preferenced? We are going to get to that because I actually want to show you once we have ah, okay, them okay, okay, okay. I want to show you how to figure out which ones are saying preference because at the end of the day, what we have is that an EC2 instance can have I'm role, which provides yeah. credentials. You can set the credentials file. Okay. You can set environment variables, environment variables and then yeah. um, uh, you can also, well, we don't want to hard code them, so I'm not actually going to show you how to hard code <laughs> yeah, them. Don't, don't want to. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. let's look what happens when I say this calling identity now. We get values back, but this is different from what we had. Remember where our user was actually our um, uh, CLI user? All of a sudden, this is now assumed role, EC2 webinar. We are no longer that other user. Was ah. showing anything. You were not showing anything. Oh, wait, wait, sorry. Apologies. Uh, this is... It's called, the, it's called the screen share juggle. So um, um, what I yes. tend to do is share the entire screen if possible. But um, if you have a massive 4K screen, this could be a It's a 4K issue. screen. Um, yeah. But give me a second. Let me do this. Let me do this. Um, I might, might have a solution to this. Uh, we can make it very complicated. I SSH into the instance, start up Tmux. You open up the Tmux session, and I show my screen of you doing Tmux. So it's kind of a... Uh, no, not no. yet. <laughs> um, I just need to close all of these other windows. Uh, here we go. Sure, Docker, you are now very small. Let me maximize the screen. Sorry. So the streaming is now on the 4K screen. Uh, entire screen. Boom. Share. There we go. That is much better. Wait. Okay, it's much better, yeah. Cool. Okay. Because now what I can do is when I um, just go flip. to... Yeah. yeah, cool. We will figure this out. Awesome. Um, so now what we can see over here is that um, we don't have... Um, we're not the same user anymore. So I just need to click on the right one. Otherwise, I'm going to click on the stream. Uh, so we can see we are the EC2 webinar here. So to answer Darko's question from earlier, what mm. takes preference? Well, no, no better way than it should. That's our mm. assumption. And I'm going to just move this back. Okay. Right. Let's see. No, oh, it's the user. Interesting. Config. It's the it's the configuration files. Okay. Okay. Fair point. Fair point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, you might by default get an EC2 instance or a resource on AWS set as a, as some permission. You can have. So one of the things that happens is customers launch an EC2 instance with some default permissions, like a blank permission role. Mm. And if you want to add more permissions on it, you just set up your user account. So yeah. Fair point. Yeah. I I, I agree. That's cool. Okay. That's cool. So this is so when you start playing, and like I said, we now have got CLI credentials inside these files, and just um. Let me just stop sharing for a second because I want to show you what, what it looks like. Uh, vi uh, dot, uh, dot AWS credentials. Um, the secret key. DDY. Uh, so. DD. Mm, yeah, but. DI. DI quotation mark. Um, let's just see if I can play it. Oh, sorry. I just made it weird. My, my command and my, my control and start keys are mapped the wrong way around because of Windows and Synergy. Um, but, well, I think they are. There we go. I'll, Let's I'll get you a book again. on this on Vim if you want. Why, thank you, Darko. <laughs> there we go. Don't do this. Uh, there we go. Cool. Ooh. Ooh. Sorry, this is now breaking me. There we go. Cool. 
share screen, that whole screen, there we go, boom. So what you can see in front of you is what that file actually looks like once you have uh, configured it correctly using the CLI. So you can see up there our access key, and you can now see my super secret access key over there as well, uh, which is not the real one in case you are wondering. Um, but yes, we don't share these. Now, the other interesting thing about the CLI is that what I can do is if I go into insert mode um, and I go down here, I can do things like this. Um, profile and then this say AWS um, uh, DLC like this. And I can set a second set of credentials in here. Um, so I'm going to just literally copy and paste this over here. Uh, let's just see. Yep, there we go. Obviously, I want to have different values over here. The reason is that I want, what's the point otherwise of setting up a second profile? But once you have these set up with the right credentials and I go uh, just quickly write quits, I'm under pressure. You can do things like, for example, AWS dash dash profile um, and then say uh, AWS, uh, what is it, DLC, do we call it? DLC, yeah. This string, the AWS DLC needs to match what you had inside the profile. And now it'll execute this as if it's that profile. And with this becomes very, very interesting is that you can actually configure it to then switch to different roles with a single uh, credential yeah. set, uh, which we're not going to do now. Because what I want to do now is I want to quickly hand over to Darko to show us the AWS shell a little bit in terms of how that works and how we can get some uh, interesting use out of it. Yeah, so um, let me switch to my screen share right now. So um, kind of a, a neat little uh, feature or a piece of software that's uh, connected to AWS uh, CLI is called AWS Shell. So if I look here at the AWS Shell, it is an open source uh, tool that basically um, is built upon um, uh, AWS CLI. And uh, it, it helps you to interactively do things with AWS CLI. So like uh, Cobus here was doing a lot of things on the CLI and attempting to use commands, which, you know, kind of maybe differ between version one and version two. And uh, you can do always always the help command, which which helps, right? But um, uh, the better way is to do it uh, with AWS Shell. Now, Shell, you to install it, it's pip3 install uh, AWS Shell, AWS dash Shell, I believe. Um, and, and you have like a, fully fledged little application let me actually just exit it uh, so if i just run aws dash shell it's gonna uh it's actually gonna pre-populate some documentation if it doesn't have it already so what it does it actually downloads the documentation locally and helps you do this so for example if i wanted to do like create a key like Cobus wanted to do i can just type ec2 and it already starts uh showing me like uh, this is also a bad color example but it's it shows me like um different options I have. So it has auto completion, absolutely, right? But if I want to do create, um, uh, create dash, I believe is it the key pair? Yeah, key pair. What's great about it is that once I do that, it's gonna show me like um, the documentation uh, entry like this. Oops, sorry, like that. I, I see the documentation in below, right? That what is, what, what is the documentation about? And actually I can actually, actually switch with F9 um, below to see what does it actually do, right? So if I switch this and I can just type here, what do I need to do? It says the key name is required, basically unique key, key name for this. And then I just define uh, a whatever uh, key, right? And, and this will create this key for me, right? So um, on top of this, if you want to like describe an EC2 instance, I can do EC2 describe, um, uh, like that, describe uh, instances, right? Uh, instances like so, but uh, it will describe all instances for me like that. But if I go again like here, and if I do inst instance IDs, I can do that. And I can also do the following. It also lists, lists me all the instances I have in this region available to me. So I can basically pick from a dropdown list, if this makes sense, pick from a dropdown list uh, set of instances or at least an, an instance mm -hmm. I wish to describe and it will show me all those things out here. Uh, on top of that, it has a bunch of other, other different things like fuzzy search, it has a Vim key movement. So if I if I type a command like this, I can also, uh, you know, kind of move a uh, move based on Vim keys between words and I can, you know, delete entire words and, and you know, all the fun stuff Vim does. So um, that is that is very cool. So if you are if you are daunted by the AWS CLI and, and the amount of options it has, AWS Shell is actually a really great tool and utility to kind of introduce you to different things. So uh, on, on part of AWS, uh, AWS CLI. So I am, what is this? Get user shows you 
actually the the user here and you will see all the the information and documentation what does this call actually do so if i do that it will show me my user and it will default put by default output as um as json so that's why i suggested cobus to use json because i've seen it how it looks in json it's better but yeah so it's it's a free open source tool that you can kind of grab from github i mean the simplest way to do it is with pip install so uh that should just work uh, again of, of course you can do much more complicated things so if you if you do things like filtering and whatnot on, on AWS CLI, which we're not doing right now um you can uh, much more easier play around with that with this one so if you want to do more complex things or or if you just want to give yourself a helping hand when you initially start with the CLI, the shell is a really nice interactive way to interact with AWS through the CLI. And cool. That's what awesome. So what I quickly want to do now, because I'm curious, is to quickly install it. So let's go ahead and open up this ad stream. And what I have here with my PowerShell is that you told me that it's pip3 install AWS shell, right? Uh, uh, yes, pip3 install AWS shell, yeah. Cool, let's see. It is installing it. And I'll be curious to see if uh, we need to do any other steps, because this is also, uh, seems a lot more useful to me than uh, just our, uh, using yeah. um, the... Hmm. So here's the thing. Uh, you don't have your Python path set. So go to dot .local, bin, uh, okay. and you will have it there. So you, you would need to have uh, um, just... Yeah, local uh, bin, and there should be AWS dash shell. Yes. Okay. So how we can get around this is we can run this as sudo, I believe, because that should put it on the path normally when you path, let's see. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, mean, I I'd be curious to see what this will do, because this will install it's it. Already installed. So, um, but try it out. Yeah. I think it will install it. Shell. Just, uh, no. Okay. So we still have to do that. Yeah. So sure. how we would fix that is um... just go to dot local. I mean, you can you can set up the path, but you can also just go to dot local bin. And I mean, for the time being, you know. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, but how you would fix this comp uh, properly is by yeah. doing editing your bash profile yeah. if you're using bash. Oh, bash RC. There we go, bash RC, sorry. Oh, this is horrible. Okay, no, I'm not even going to try. Sorry, I'm quitting out. It's I can't read that. It's too blue. Yes. Somebody uh, brought us a raid. Hey, sir, who brought us a raid? Ria. Ria. Who is Ria? Ooh. And thank, thank you, Ria, for the raid. Raid is a Twitch yeah. thing where people from another channel go to a different channel and kind of view the stream. So hello, everybody, if you're joining from, from, from Ria's channel. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so just quickly, um, for DevOps tech, who's asking us any doc link to follow the steps. Uh, yes. So what we're doing at the moment is we are just setting up the AWS CLI and yeah. configuring it and showing you how to do the various, uh, steps. And for example, what we just took a look at is this, the AWS shell. So if you search yeah. for it, you can see that it'll take you to a GitHub repo and that GitHub repo has got all this install steps, um, available in terms of how to install this. Uh, what we did before this was actually install the AWS CLI version 2, um, which is the base how to interact with AWS APIs. And we followed the official AWS documentation. And you can literally just search for, um, well, let me show you quickly, AWS uh, CLI v2 install like that. And that will take you to a page. And this page will have all of the details for you that we've been following. So it shows you um, um, additional documentation, et cetera. And we are following the Linux guide at the moment. Um, uh, yes, um, Ria, uh, so thank you very much. Um, let, let's pop this on screen because it's so nice. Um, AWS streams. Yes, we actually stream quite a lot and especially in the EMEA time zone, Darko and myself stream three to six times a week, depending on when you a hit lot. us. <laughs> yes. But it's fun. Uh, this, yeah. So it's always, rate. um, yeah, it's, it's usually some kind of tech type of streaming. Um, yep. And uh, today's session is very much focused on beginner content. So people that are completely new to AWS Cloud um, that are just getting into it, starting to use it. Uh, this uh, series is called Developers Let's Code. And we're looking today at how to configure the AWS CLI, SDK, um, uh, as well as the SK, sorry, which you can embed in applications and how to interact with AWS um, APIs effectively. 
um, just as, as a starting point. Um, and just quickly, and this is a prop we actually use from one of the other uh, streams that we do. I will, uh, let me just focus quickly. Self -promo we call it the yes. self-promo jar. So I'll put some money in here because I will promote Darko myself. We also stream on Mondays and Fridays at uh, 11 uh, in Central European time. So about two and a half hours before whatever your current time is. Yeah. And also, if you want to join us for office hours, we had one earlier today, an hour and a half ago. That's the Mia White AMA session. Um, Thursdays, we've got the African uh, um, office hours, uh, which I normally lead with other people joining me. Darko is often on it. And there you can ask us any AWS tech questions and things. So that's tomorrow at... 12 uh, Central European time as well. So f uh, an hour and 50 minutes before current slot again. So, but what I've actually done is you can just head over to my GitHub page and see when we are streaming because I've learned about GitHub page um, uh, readmes that you can put on your main profiles. So you can just head over to Kubis Bernard and I'm putting more money in the jar, don't worry. Um, and what you can see over here is that these are some of the streams. I'll add information about uh, the other streams there as well for those that are interested. Cool. Okay, so where were we? Um, we actually have quite a lot of people joining now. Thank you very much, Ria. That's uh, uh, very nice of you. So let's get my face off the screen. Well, part of the second version of me, at least. So what have we done so far? We are now able to actually interact with uh, the AWS CLI. So let us quickly take a look. Uh, thanks, Stuart. Um, I actually... Definitely make sure that I go check out Ria's yeah. uh, stream and content of this as well. I just followed. She's actually hosting our channel right now. So thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Um, so what do we want to do still? Um, I think I want to show you how to access a file from S3 because that's always useful to have a practical how to yeah. actually use the CLI to do something useful. And to be honest, like that's the most time I use the CLI. At least in my use case, I yeah. don't run any production on AWS, but like my most used command on AWS CLI is actually S3 interaction. So if you want to upload a massive file to AWS S3, the best way to do it is through the CLI because you can do you can you can do things such as um, endpoint accelerators and whatnot through the CLI. So it can be really much much faster and, and super simple to sync a directory locally and to the cloud as well. So very cool. Yeah, just quickly there. Um, as with all things in life, there are limits. The of limit course. being is a single file cannot be more than five petabytes. Oh, sorry, terabytes. Terabytes. Oh, boo. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll that we'll should. <laughs> yeah, that should be okay for a lot of people. Um, so let let us show you how to do this quickly. We have got eight minutes left. Um, no. The first thing is we have to create a bucket. So let's go ahead and say S3. I will probably have quite a few buckets in here, given that this is my normal Scratch account that I demo everything in. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Yes, as you can see, lots and lots. Cool. So let's go ahead and create a bucket. Uh, developers, let's code. If this is not taken, I'll be very surprised. So just quickly, for those unfamiliar, a uh, S3 bucket name is globally unique across all AWS accounts. So if one of you have this account or, or this bucket name and create it now quickly underneath me, we won't be able to use it. So let's just quickly see. Uh, oh, wow. We were lucky. Awesome. So now I can say developers, let's code over here. And we can say we've got nothing in the bucket. Now, S3 is just a file storage system. It's an object store. So just a quick differentiator, because I had this question earlier, is that it's not a file system. You can't, well, yeah. there are, uh, let's say, solutions out there available, not from AWS that allows you to mount it like a file system. Please don't. Please file don't. systems have got very specific ways of interacting with the actual content. And because S3 is not meant for that, you will not have a good time if you start Exactly. Doing it in unofficial yeah. ways. The, 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 this is, these are translators basically to a file system. S3 is an object-based system where you just have objects and that's it. Uh, so this, these tools that exist out there uh, are, they work, but I wouldn't rely my data on it. So let's call it that way. Yeah. So let's quickly run this, which is the S3 Alice and see what is in that bucket. Hmm. Right. This is the first one, and I specifically did this now without fixing because Cape Town is a fairly new region. It launched on 22 okay. April. So what happens here is that you can see this is something to do with um, list V operation. Yeah. yeah. So how you fix this is by going into your uh, AWS um, uh, uh, profile, or sorry, a config file like this. And what you can see over here is default region. And what you need to add here is, uh, let me just quickly Google for it because I always have to do it. Uh, you search, oh, let me show you on the screen. Sorry, uh, wait, no, not there. 
Yeah, here we go. Uh, what you do is you search for AWS S3 V4 signature like this. And then if you open this up, switch for it loads. Sorry, I am all the way down in South Africa, so the speed is not that great. Um, there will be an example over here that explains all of that. Uh, sorry, let's just add. Uh, oh, second one. Because it's just a little snippet that you have to grab. Uh, here we go. So this. Let's grab this quickly. So you can do it by hand, but um, let me just get out of here quickly. Oh, no, I'm not. Strong key. Sorry, my control key is not map. Now I paste this in. Can I? Yes. Yeah. So what happens now is if I open up this file again, you'll see that we have got this section added over here. So you, this is how you can configure it for this specific profile. So let's go ahead and put out of this again. Now, oh, I'm at the bottom, sorry. Here we go, control L. Now, if I run this ls command over here, oh, it is still broken. Hmm. Doesn't matter. So you're going to check your key and sign method. I wonder what I'm doing wrong here. Let me just see if I need to add a slash. No. Okay, so this is interesting. It should actually work. Let me just Google this. I apologize for this. We can actually do, you know what? Let me quickly just work around it because I know this is S3 new region issue. Uh, no, not that one, this one. Uh, we are going to go back to S3 console. Uh, let's go ahead and say create buckets. Uh, developers, let's code two. And I'm not going to do it in Cape Town. I'm going to do it in Dublin, in Ireland. Sorry, not Dublin, Ireland, where I normally um, do my demos from. And now let's create that bucket. Developers, let's code, go into it. Uh, still empty because it's new. Guess what? And now, what if I do, if I add the two there, now it yeah. should be happy. Oh, <laughs> what did I do wrong? Um, CLI issues? Uh, mm. try to, try to, uh, so, is it in the same account? It is. Are you? Yeah, it is, you, yeah. So, wait a second. AWS S3, AWS S3. I don't see this now, what the, this, uh, Issues. Sorry, apologies for for wasting a little bit of time on the stream now. Yeah, for for, for me, I, I, I'll just write it on my own. It, it works on my. I use AWS version one point eighteen. Okay, I'm using version one for some reason. Uh, not sure why. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm just quickly scanning up here. Um, ah, you know what it could be. What? Let me just quickly do this again. And we move it to uh, AWS backup. It could be because of the conflict between the role and the actual um, credentials that we have set. Let's okay. just double check. No such bucket. Ah, there we go. Um, specified bucket does not exist. That's interesting to try and make a typo. Did you, did you, uh, you, you have to define regions, that's that region. Oh, well, of course. Well, box box available, uh, so it should be okay. But um, um, region EU West one. Let's just double check. There we go. No such bucket. That's interesting. Uh, no, no, the bucket is definitely. Let's just check the null bucket developers. Let's code. Oh, <laughs> darker. What? Ha ha ha. But still, illegal ah. location constraint report, uh, EU West location constraint. Okay, so, all right, uh, because, um, yeah, EU West. No, but it, it, you have check. to do the first one. So you have to do the, it doesn't, you don't have permissions right now because mm. your, your user doesn't have permissions for this one. Um, but if you try to do the, without the two, try to do the first bucket, so um, as well. Okay. Let's just double check, uh, yeah, it was back up to, I want to see now how it works. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's just remove this because I'm curious. Mm -hmm. uh, clean this up. Let's see. Interesting. Okay, so I'll try that one. Mm. It's um, so this, I think. Yeah. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay. Let's just do that move again. There we go. Illegal location concentration. Yeah. Ooh. So this 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 is the interesting one. What we will do is we will go double check and we will come back with an answer for that. Um, 
in let's say tomorrow's ask me anything uh, office hours in because as darker's watch who's that is back in his room is indicating it is now on the hour 10 seconds ahead i believe um so we unfortunately are out of time but i hope you found this useful and uh once again thank you ria for rating yeah. this channel um i really appreciate it and uh we will definitely ping you because and i'll go have a look at your channel your content i'm not very curious <laughs> She does some development that I've seen. So very good. Awesome. Um, cool. Well, thank you. Thank you so that, for joining. Yeah. Thank you. We didn't get through exactly what I wanted today, but uh, we will hopefully um, share this with you in future. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.